things for the purpose of performing them, and then I never perform them, ever. <laughs> so tonight is my world premiere, <laughs> which is why I have this to hold on to in case I start to freak out. <laughs> uh, this is a true story, this essay. I have changed the names to protect myself <laughs> uh, from people who might get angry. Uh, hey. It is called Corey's Patient Observer. Today, my roommate admitted that he calls out my name when he spanks his girlfriend. <laughs> he has this amazing ability to both mollify me and horrify me simultaneously. <laughs> I found his demonstration equally impressive. Arching his back, arms extended with fingers curled as if clutching a dead carcass, Corey raised his head toward the ceiling, pushed out his lips, and bayed out my name as he cocked an arm and thrust it down, showing me what it looks like to spank Lauren had she been laying there. <laughs> By this point in time, I have seen Lauren once. Uh, waking up on a Sunday morning, eyes crusted with sleep, I slid my pajama itself into the living room and watched the front door of my house open to reveal the plump backside of a woman who would turn out to be Lauren as soon as she spun around. Little did Lauren know that my first and only visual image of her would prove so useful as I inserted her, door frame and all, into the spot where Corey's hand finished its virtual spank. I had heard much about Lauren as Corey loved to spew her virtues, her greatest attribute in Corey's eyes being that she would sit through Monday night football before fucking. <laughs> her second best virtue being that she didn't let the fact that Corey was dating other women get in the way of their fucking. <laughs> Lauren turned to me that first day and said how glad she was to meet me. I didn't reply the same because I basically had met her. The only thing missing was her face, as I've known her voice for weeks. <laughs> However, phrases like, Corey, you're the best, seem like they're done more for my benefit than to convey truth. I once told Corey that him having sex with the girl sounds less like intercourse and more like the two of them are just enjoying really good cupcakes. <laughs> this, of course, is not the first time I've met a roommate's significant other before actually meeting them. The day I moved into my first apartment on Capitol Hill, I was greeted by the sounds of Amanda and Mike, the thumping of my moving boxes underscored by the thumping of their moving bed. Eventually, they got engaged, even though she didn't love him. But they never got married because he didn't love her. Funny it didn't work out since they were in agreement on such basic stuff. <laughs> I must say that Lauren is my favorite so far, basically because she knows what she wants and she just goes and gets it. In this case, she wants Corey's lack of commitment and he has ample to give. <laughs> For a while, my favorite was Chrissy, who came before, during, and after Lauren, until she went away for good and Lauren came back. Corey has a tendency to date aimless women with mental problems. <laughs> For these reasons, I find it difficult to like them. But in the 47 seconds that I knew Chrissy, she managed to solve a problem with my T-Mobile service. Chrissy scored with me big and quick. I liked her. It's a shame she decided to egg our house. <laughs> Corey pointed out the slimy siding and broken eggshells on our porch. Apparently, Chrissy, in a fit of anger, emailed a nasty gram to all of her former work colleagues, including Corey, that explained how they were all bad people. I guess Corey must have been especially bad, for then Chrissy saw fit to purchase a dozen farm fresh grade eggs. I have this vision of her in the supermarket as if she's purchasing eggs for any other normal breakfast occasion, deciding whether they get the best value or go for the double A jumbos somehow not worried that her purchase would end up mushed into the fibers of our house. Chrissy then got into her car and proceeded to drive 30 minutes with these eggs across a lake to our home, where, infuriated, she then stood by and one by one smashed them into bits upon our porch. My understanding is that her original intent was to egg Corey's car, but since he wasn't home, she improvised. <laughs> I have no problem with her emails to former co-workers, but I'm sorry, Chrissy. It would take a lot of help with my cell phone to balance out aiding our house. A lot of cell phone help. <laughs> the one thing about Chrissy uh, was how sudden and intense her fracturing of sanity was. As unlike Emily, who I also met before I met, this time it wasn't pounding sexual acts that aroused my awareness of her. Instead, it was all the talk and description Corey gave of her. Bef uh, before the actual meeting took place. He informed me that he had told her I don't like women. Corey was misinformed. 
because he based his statement on my reactions to the various co-workers, I mean, girlfriends, <laughs> that he paraded over. Whether it was the drunken Tina who giggled inanely at my father one evening as we both searched through her frizzy curls looking for a face. <laughs> <laughs> Or the former Marine who actually has killed a person who's, and whose gay friend propositioned Corey after following him to the restaurant bathroom. <laughs> These are not women. These are more like caricatures drawn up for some piece of comedy. <laughs> Emily, too, is not a woman. She is an Edward Gorey character come to life. Stark, white face, short legs that move independently of her body. <laughs> and the, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> and the obligatory black dress skirt thing that, regardless of whether she wore a hood, gave the impression that she was wearing a hood. <laughs> Emily exhorted to Corey that she was determined to make me like her. Her first opportunity came when Corey invited her to a party that I was throwing, and she had a chance to introduce herself. Instead, she slinked into the shadows to the extent that no one knew she had even arrived, until I saw that Corey had left most likely to eat cupcakes with her. <laughs> her second opportunity came when she entered my room to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. I will attempt to reproduce the conversation we had. Emily, Joel, I know you don't like me very much, but I want you to know that Corey's a really great guy and I'm good to him. We're good for each other. He's a really great guy. More Emily. And even though I'm drunk, I want you to know I'll be good to him. We're good for each other. I don't want you to hate me. I'll treat Corey right. He's a really great guy. I'll be good to him. Don't hate me. Joel. And why would I hate you? Emily. I don't know. Me. Is, is that all? Emily. Yes. Okay. Goodbye. It's funny that she didn't know why I would hate her. Could it be that every time I came home, I found yet another pair of her shoes in the foyer, but never found her in the foyer? <laughs> it was a mounting pile that required each night she leave with less shoes than she arrived with. <laughs> I began to worry that Corey sent her home barefoot each night. Or maybe I dislike her because she would never knock on the front door, instead would slink to the side of the house and wrap on the window of Corey's bedroom like I was some sort of parent who wouldn't let him out? <laughs> Could it be that every time I entered the room, she would stare at the floor and refuse to engage in my conversation, as if ignoring me changed the fact that I actually lived there? <laughs> or maybe, just maybe, could it be that she walked into my room drunk and chose as her very first conversation with me to implore me not to hate her? <laughs> with so many choices, it's no wonder she can't decide. <laughs> Corey used to say that the reason he liked Emily is that she told him one day to think of all the things that he wants other girls to do that they won't do, and she'll do them. <laughs> Observations, that would mean she'd have to stop dating him. Because <laughs> that's what he wanted all the other girls to do, but they wouldn't. I think Chrissy considered throwing eggs a substitute for throwing rice. Tina substituted getting drunk for being smart enough to leave. And the Marines substituted killing a man for ever having to pay attention to what another man wants. <laughs> Corey and Emily did eventually end their relationship. I'm not sure how it all went down, but I do know the sound of anger and disappointment. Standing in the living room, I could hear Corey's answering machine blaring Emily's voice at full volume. Corey, at least all the people I know who really care came to support me in court. Where were you? <laughs> Somehow their complete lack of commitment has evolved into a complete commitment. If he's being an ass, she, she tells him. And if she's being an ass, he's usually being more of one. Symbiosis. <laughs>